Hey guys, welcome back to Apartment 3 Podcast, the best podcast in the world. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that bell to be notified when we go live. And make sure you follow us on our social medias at APT3Podcast. Our website, we have a website now. We haven't really talked about that. But Apartment3.club. Yeah, and we're on Apple Music, not Apple Music, but Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So just check us out on those. Yeah, definitely. And we have a very special guest today. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, of course. My name is Joyce Lane. Um, I'm here today to talk about my story, essentially, how it's changed me, um, how it's led me to do what I'm doing. And yeah, thank you for having me out here. I'm really, really excited. Yeah. So for the people that don't know, we've actually, all three of us have known each other for a while, right? Years. Yeah, yeah. Years. I don't even know how long it's been. Probably been like we were like kids. Yeah, it was probably, really we cool. were in middle school, I think, too, yeah. right? Or was it high school? It was yeah. start of high school, end of middle school. I want to say like middle school. We all like got to know our faces, kind of thing, yeah. and then yeah. like you know, as we started being around each other more, it was like, oh, you know, yeah, we just yeah. became yeah. friends. We didn't them. mention, but we know each other from church. So yeah. yes, kind of yes. like Herbert. For anybody that's seen the Herbert, I've known Herbert through church too, and you know Herbert too as well. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, I went to school with him. Yeah, um, since so. elementary. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, um, you actually have a very miraculous story. You're a drunk driver survivor, right? Yes. Do yes. you want to touch on what happened that night? <sighs> okay. It's like, for me, it's like, where do I start? Because there was just, it's packed with a lot of things. Start from the beginning. Um, start from the beginning. Yep. Okay, let's see. Um, so, I transferred to UCLA. And so, it was in November of 2016. I went back. Okay, no. In November 2016, um... I decided that it was like, it was my first quarter at UCLA and it was like week eight and we have 10 weeks because the quarter system. So I already had a lot of like finals and like deadlines coming up and I was like, okay, like I know that for the next three weeks, I'm not going to be able to go home. And I was really like attached to going home and seeing my family. So I was like, I'm going to go home this weekend and then like I'll come back and I'll do my stuff. Right. So it was a Friday night and my, the person that I was with at the time, um, he was, he was down there, so we were going to drive back. And I was going to spend the night with him and his friends, and then I was going to go home in the morning and show up at my house and be like, oh, hi, like, I came from school. Mm-hmm. Don't lie to your parents. But So um, it was like a surprise thing? That yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming? They didn't, they didn't even, okay, yeah, they didn't even know I was in town. Oh, okay. Because um, I wasn't allowed to be over there. But it's fine. Um, so what ended up happening, like, it was like 11 p.m. that night, and we were at one of our friend's house, and we decided to go to Wingstop. And, you know, not a big deal. Like, 11 p.m., we don't want to go to Wingstop. So, um, some uh, more friends come over, and we get in the cars, and we, like, head out. Well, we got in one car, and we all head out. So, it's five of us in the car. Um, it's our friend, um, two brothers, and my ex, and then me. And I'm sitting in the back in the middle of the car, and we're on Feeling Road. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys know that highway. Yeah. yeah. Um, very dark, very desolate. Um, it's 11 p.m., um, I remember fighting with my ex, like, to put on his seatbelt, because, like, you never know what could happen kind of thing, foreshadowing. And, um, but, yeah, um, I don't even remember the accident at all. Um, they, we crossed some street in Phelan, and then everything went black. And the next thing that I, the next thing that I remember um, is me waking up, which was just, like, a bunch of lights, and um, someone's asking me, like, like who, what's my name and like if I know any phone numbers who they can call because um I didn't have any ID on me I had a really bad habit that when I was with my ex like I wouldn't carry a debit card ID like anything so I just had my phone on me and yeah so and they at the time I'm really bad at remembering phone numbers I don't know for some reason back in the day I could remember everyone's number but I didn't so I only knew my ex's number and my mom's that's it and for some I didn't know what's going on but like I just knew in the back of my head that um, I couldn't call my my ex for some reason. So I sent my mom's phone number, and yeah, she answered. They told her that I was at Loma Linda Hospital and um, that she needed to come down. And she didn't, like, she they couldn't, they wouldn't tell her, like, what happened to me, but that I needed to go. So she went, um, let's see. Okay, so what happened in the accident? Um, what I don't remember is that the drunk driver was going 98 miles per hour, um, the opposite direction, and he hits the car in front of him, um, and to not hit him more, he goes into our lane as we're passing by. Um, and so he hits us pretty much head on, but at a diagonal. So like I said earlier, I was in the back in the middle. And yeah, it, 98 miles per hour, that freaking obliterated my body. Like obliterated my body for like a whole month. The only thing that I could move was this arm. 
And even then I couldn't even really move it because that was the only place that I could take blood out. And I got blood taken out every single morning. Um, I was in the hospital for a month. Um, let me backtrack. Yeah, so I was, because we don't have a trauma center up here in Victorville, um, I was airlifted to Loma Linda. So that whole process took like about three hours. And I remember the doctor, my mom told me later, the doctor came up to her and told her like, I don't know how she's alive because um, every, because I, I tore my foot because I was wearing sandals at night. Um, and he said that everything was torn in my foot except the main artery. And he doesn't understand how I didn't bleed out. And that's just one example. Like I'll go through my injuries, but um, I remember my injury list when they gave me the paper, there was like two pages long of everything that, that was like wrong with me when I got into the hospital. So it was just crazy. Like all these little things um, were like really, really close calls. And like, there's like no way, like if I ever had any doubt of like divine or like God or anything like that, like that accident made me realize that there's like no way, there's no way that there wasn't some kind of divine intervention in my life because there were so many little close calls that could have drastically changed the quality of my life and it didn't, you know? That was just one thing. Um, so yeah, so essentially when I was in the hospital, um, it wasn't just everything that happened to me. Like it was also a lot of things, at, like healing was really, really hard. Um, there's drug addiction. Um, there's um, infections from surgeries that are not healing right. Getting more surgeries because of it. I had a blood transfusion. I got pneumonia. Like it's just things that kept adding on and adding on and just really tears you as a person and really tears you not only physically because you see like you're mentally intact, but you see your, your body physically doesn't work mm -hmm. and it just it breaks you down it breaks you down so much and um yeah i ended up having about five surgeries in total over the course of two weeks um and let's see we can go through my injuries yeah 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 i actually have a question so okay. you said um you don't remember the accident you only mm -mm. remember so you you remember waking up in the hospital or and so you were how do you know how long that in between was yes it like, was about three hours three, oh you did say that so that's like you were out for three hours i wasn't that's, out for three hours that's the thing they told me that i was conscious the entire time really but i don't remember wow. you don't remember anything anything and it was interesting because i looked it up later going off of that um and i read that when your body is such in a, a, a large state of trauma it's so busy trying to survive that it's not making memories and it just put into perspective like i was that close to dying in that moment that my body was just like like i know i'm trying to like save your life like you're bleeding out all these things you know because they told me that i was screaming i was yelling that i was conscious and i was talking and like i was just a wreck but i don't remember feeling those things i don't remember seeing those things so yeah that's a really good question <laughs> yeah that's wild i didn't i didn't know that i know the body's a an amazing thing like you can do stuff like that but i didn't know it stops making memories like yes, i thought yes. you just black out and you don't your body's not conscious but i didn't know you stay awake and just don't remember any of it that's yeah that's insane to me yeah sorry okay so continue sorry i didn't mean to interrupt. No, no no you're fine no thank you um what was i what was i saying oh you're gonna talk about your injuries oh yeah my injuries yeah the the cool part um, I, I guess <laughs> if, if that's what you want to me call it. Me and my dark humor got me through this. Okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of how I am. Like, I try to make jokes out of stuff. Like, if it's not a good yeah. situation, Bad I personally, I try to just make it funny. Yeah, I definitely. Guess. And I feel so, like it's okay. Makes it okay because it's my situation. Yeah. Like, obviously, like I'm not gonna make fun of like that, well, yeah. whatever anybody's. Yeah, going that's through why I'm not gonna make a joke yeah. about anything that anybody else has been through. But yeah. like for me, yeah, like I mean, stuff that happened in my past is like, oh. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal, but in the grand scheme of thing, it was. So yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead. Continue. Okay. Let's see. So, um, guys, going ninety miles per hour. Um, so my jaw broke in half. Um, luckily I didn't lose any teeth at all, but a lot of them did split in half. So for a long time, um, the nerves of my teeth were exposed so much that like drinking water really hurt, brushing my teeth really really hurt, um, breathing <laughs> through my mouth really hurt. But fun fact, I didn't get dental work done until a year afterwards because i was so like done with like the the surgeries and everything like that i was like i just need a break because that that thing was on me they were just like oh when you get out just make sure you go to a dentist kind of thing i was like I'm, I'm done right now like i'll 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 deal with it and like i ended up healing kind of like i still had my teeth like in half and stuff so i like crowns in my mouth but um yeah so it got better like it got less sensitive but i was really painful um, my jaw broke in half. So I remember my mandible was like hanging for a good week and a half because they didn't fix it right away because everything else was like of more importance. And I was just like, dang, like 
Like, yeah, that's crazy. And I remember talking and uh, interacting with people. And I remember like my jaw, like just like hanging there. And I would like, people would come and I'd be like, look, and like, I don't know, for some reason I could move it and it would go down lower. And like, people were just like, oh my gosh, like, well, why are you doing that? Yeah. <laughs> but like, I was so, the medicine was awesome. So like, I didn't feel a thing. And so it was just like, whatever. Um, so yeah, I have like a plate of my jaw going across like right here. Um, let's see. Oh, and then like, like, because there was a plate, they like moved my teeth and everything like that when it healed, like, like I had braces for three years, but now it looks like I didn't because of that, but it's fine. Like in comparison to everything that came out, out of it, like it doesn't matter, but let's see. Okay. So then I, um, fractured my cervical spine, my C7 right here. So I was wearing a neck brace for about like eight weeks. Um, so another thing like that, I almost got paralyzed and I didn't. So that's crazy to me. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I broke a lot of ribs. I damaged some organs, um, because the impact, the, my pelvis was like shattered completely. Like I have metal all in my pelvis. I have a scar going across like half of my body. Um, my femur fractured. So I have a rod put in through my femur and like me to like waste time in the hospital sitting around. Like I was looking up the surgeries and how they did everything. And like the, I did get to see the surgery. Like it was an animation of the surgery of like how you put metal in someone's inside of someone's bones. Like that concept was crazy to me. I don't yeah. know if it was just like me being naive or something like they were telling me that they put a rod in my femur and I'm like, okay, like it's next to it. Like, I'm just trying to think like how they did it. And he's like, no, it's inside of your bone. And I was like, what? Like, how do you put rods inside of people's bones? Like it was crazy. So that, yeah, basically that didn't, like bother you, like trying to look up like the surgery. No, 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 really? no. Yeah. Honestly, like I've loved medicine my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm still in it. And, um, that stuff really intrigues me. Like, and I really wanted, I was really curious to see like, how did these people put my body back together? Um, and yeah, it was a sort of like healing for me too. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they like pretty much like prop your knee and it's bent and they like drill, they like hammer the rod in through your knee. So, so pretty, pretty gnarly. going through like, this is like kind of a weird question, but like going through like metal detectors, is there like something you have to tell like the TSA agents in security? Um, here in the U S no, I haven't experienced that. I think that it has to do with the fact that a lot of us have metal in our body. Um, and everyone's really understanding of that. If anyone wants to come at me, like I'll just show all my scars. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also we have the x-rays. Yeah. Um, so I think that's fine too. But when I went to Belize, um, I did go off and through the metal detector, but then like she like swiped me up like that and I didn't come off with anything. So she, she didn't like question me more, but mm -hmm. that was like the only time that I did come off. Um, and that's like more of a third world country kind of thing. It's not as advanced. Um, so yeah, I did go off there. So that was, that was interesting. I'm assuming it's kind of like a different type of metal too, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's not just and like... Um, from what I heard, because um, we'd always go through metal detectors when I went to the Philippines, and we'd always go off, but something about guns, like if they were saying, their reasoning was that it's like a level of how much metal there is, and like when you go through a detector, the metal in a gun like is a lot, something like that. But I don't think that's true or not. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's a different type of metal. Yeah, um, I feel like maybe, especially mm -hmm. like you were saying, like the medicine's so good. I'm assuming that the type of metal that they put in now is like they realize, okay, we'll do. This. So. Yeah, exactly. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So what else? What else? Um, I said my femur. Oh, they told me that when I went into the hospital, I didn't have an elbow anymore. Um, so they basically like reconstructed my elbow. Um, and I could, yeah, I have like a whole plate and like screws going That's through crazy. my elbow. And then another fun fact, they told me that the surgeon was like, yeah, it's never going to get to like a hundred percent. Cause it was like this for like six months and it wouldn't move. Um, it was like so painful out of all the surgeries that I had. I don't know. For some reason, this one was the most painful. I woke up and I was like screaming and yelling and crying. The pain medication wasn't working. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It was, yeah. And I think it was because like, I was more conscious by that point. Cause it was like two weeks worth of surgeries. Yeah. Um, and I was more conscious and aware and I could feel things more. Um, so I think that, but yeah, I didn't have an elbow. Um, they put that back together. Oh, thank God for therapy. Cause like, hi, I can like extend. Yeah. Fine. Move fine. Now. Yeah. Move fine. And you said you were wearing sandals too. So yes. I'm assuming your, your feet too, yeah, right? So that's one of the last injuries. Um, I was wearing sandals that night and since I was sitting in the back in the middle, I think my foot got cut underneath the seat that's like in front of me and it like split it in half they told me that i almost lost my foot um so it's crazy like i probably wouldn't be walking maybe yeah. not the same or anything like that and for a long time um it was really swollen i couldn't wear shoes i didn't i lost sensation in my feet but yeah i healed just moving it around um luckily that artery didn't get cut 
um yeah i'm really grateful like i don't think i'm really aware that people can get injured way less than i did yeah. and have more long-term effects from it afterwards and it's just crazy to me that all those things happened and i healed not only 100 percent, but i feel i healed even more because like i healed mentally and physically and then like the accident destroyed everything i knew about myself like everything everything because your ego is shot like your independence like everything is taken from you and you're helpless for like such a long period of time and you have to like rebuild yourself from this trauma and i and i really think that yeah the accident literally built me into a new person and i'm really grateful for that really really grateful yeah um when the accident happened um did they tell you who contacted like the emergency like 911 like, not necessarily the first responder but yeah. the first person to like, like be was on it like scene a passerby oh, or um it was on feeling road so i think we were right next to um, houses, kind of, um, even though it's really desolate. But we were next to houses, and I guess people came outside and saw, um, and they started calling. Um, so, yeah, luckily for that. But even then, they still took a long time to like, yeah. get things on the show on the road. Because it, it is, like, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So were you, were you able to, like, contact the people that called first? Or, like... I've never... Like, that never crossed yeah. my mind. I feel really bad now. But no, oh, yeah. no, no, no. I have no idea, like, who exactly it was. We just knew that it was, like, people around there. Um, yeah, never. I feel like it would be cool. I don't I don't really know how you would go about it or anything. Yeah, But, like, yeah. I feel like that would definitely be, like... Yeah, like definitely. You literally saved my life. Like, you know what I mean? I want to look into that Yeah, now. I don't know how you would, but... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The police report. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. And then, um, do you know what happened to the, the driver that hit you? I do. Um, yeah, so the guy was 19 years old, unfortunately. Um, he passed away immediately, and so did my friend who was driving. Because, like I said, the impact was diagonal, and it was completely to um, my friend who was driving and to me. Um, and I, other than passing away like my friend did, I also I got the worst of it because of the way the impact targeted us. Because um, our friends that were on the right side of us, um they were fine uh, fine i say that yeah. just in, in comparison to us um they were bruised up but they remember everything mm -hmm. um so they didn't have to go to the hospital or anything my ex who was sitting to like to the left of me um his right side got injured for the most part because it was closer to me because he was closer to the area of the impact um he did spend a few days in the hospital but yeah he did get better too um so yeah he the so the driver who hit us passed away immediately and so did my friend um, it was really hard for everybody. Um, and for a long time, I felt really, because it would, because people lost their lives that day. For a long time, I, I felt so guilty feeling like I'm really happy that this happened kind of thing because a lot of good came out of it. Yeah. But I've learned that um, everything serves a purpose essentially. And like, I can't, I can't feel bad because so many, so much, so much bad happened because I feel so much more good came out of it too. And that I wouldn't be who I am today. And I'm sure that my friends who were involved wouldn't be who they are today if it wasn't for, for the situation. Was it really hard for you to open up about the situation? And like how long did it take for you to be comfortable mm. like telling the story? Let's see. I feel like it took me a good year for me to be sitting here and talking about it without crying. Because I would start talking about it and like immediately like my throat would get like knotted and I would start crying like mm -hmm. I, I couldn't help it I wouldn't want to but I couldn't help it because I was so em emotionally tied to my everything that happened to me because yeah I didn't remember the I didn't remember crashing but I do remember healing and yeah. healing is brutal 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 like yeah um so it took me like a good year to to be talking about it um and I'm really happy to sh yeah anytime anybody asks me about it like I'm happy to share it because I'm really grateful to be here. Just like, mm -hmm. yeah, like it just all in all, I'm really grateful to be here. So we're actually going to take a break right now. And then when we get back, we'll touch on what happened after the okay. healing process. Okay. Hey guys, we're back. Hope that ad wasn't too bad for you. So let's get back to our guest. Um, the aftermath of what happened that night. Um, how long was the physical therapy process? I don't, I feel like it hasn't stopped and I'll tell you why. Um, I was really surprised because I felt like a decade ago, uh, people wouldn't start therapy for, for injuries until like weeks later, months after. 
And it was so shocking to me that like they do, do the surgeries a few days later or even like two days later, they would come in and like start moving my arms and my legs. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like everything hurts. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But no, I, I feel like um, medicine has grown so much that they realize that movement is super essential to recovery. So um, every surgery that I had, they had me moving. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't stand on my own two feet for a few months, so I couldn't get out of bed, but they were like moving my arms, my legs. I had therapists coming to my room um, every single day at different hours to work different parts of my body um, every single day that I was there, which I'm really, really grateful for um, because um, I wouldn't have done it on my own accord because I knew because two weeks after all the surgeries are done, you're pretty much ready to go home. Um, and I don't know what I would have done. I wouldn't, I, I really feel like I wouldn't be in the position that I am now um, physically if it wasn't for them allowing me to stay another two weeks. Um, because luckily my insurance improved me getting transferred to a rehab hospital where they taught me how to take a shower, where they taught me how to dress myself, where they taught me how to brush my hair, where they taught me where I, where I was, um, where I was, um, weaned off of pain medication, where, um, I was looked after, you know, probably where I was made sure that I was going to be okay. Um, and I learned a lot of new things, how to like transfer from my bed to my wheelchair how to sit up like all these little things that we take for granted like they had they taught me that and I had therapy also therapy every single morning um yeah so that also helped a lot made a huge difference and then after that um I got when I got sent to my house in December December 18th I went home um so it was ex exactly a month because um the accident happened or it was December 19th 18 or 19th the accident happened November 18th and then I was sent home December 18, 19, so exactly a month. And then after that, I had therapists coming to my house and helping me like with movement, you know? And then after that, I got cleared for outpatient therapy where I was at a clinic for about from January until June, I wanna say. So for like a good six months, I was doing therapy. And so like, this is where I had the realization I was on the cable machine one time. And like before this, I had never lifted my life. Like you wouldn't catch me in a gym because I didn't know how to do anything. You know, it's really, it's very intimidating if you don't, if you're, if you don't know how to do anything. So, um, I was on the cable machine and I was doing exercises that I knew that people would do in a gym. And I was like, like I'm getting stronger. This is really cool. And I realized that like exercise is essentially therapy for the rest of your life, you know? And that just like clicked for me and it just changed everything for me. And it was, as far as like exercise went, and yeah, I haven't stopped since I, I see exercise as therapy. I see exercise as an opportunity to move my body, like to say thank you, because I know how it feels to not be able to move. Yeah. So you kind of touched on like you going to the gym and like before this, you never went. So what made you that first time? Like, you know what? I'm gonna go to the gym. Like, was it physical therapy? Yeah, it was I know, physical therapy. I know they kind of not necessarily put you in a gym, but it's a lot of gym movements. So it was through physical therapy and you're like, I yeah, like this. Yeah, it was definitely physical therapy because guys like I couldn't move like yeah. I can't yeah. stress that enough like I I went from not being able to move not being able to lift my to me before I got out the hospital I was able to lift my leg without like pulling it towards me like that was a huge accomplishment and it was so painful you know and it made me not take these little things for granted and um from that I went to a wheelchair from that I went to a walker from that I, I started trying to walk and so um, when I got into physical therapy and I saw how much stronger I started getting with like doing all the weight machines and everything, I was like, what the heck? Like, th like this is insane. Like, where has this been all my life kind of thing, you know? Um, and yeah, so that kind of like, that definitely motivated me and inspired me to continue it. And so I started following fitness people on Instagram. I started watching YouTube videos on like how to do exercises properly, how to like work the cable machines. And yeah, I just, I just started this whole learning process that hasn't really stopped, you know? And I, I'm really, really grateful because it's something that I really, really enjoy doing now. Um, it's something that I really found, find empowering because I, I always, I always humble myself back to that moment of staring at the same white wall 24 hours of the day, not being able to move. Definitely. Um, so I know you said before the accident happened, you had a love for medicine and you wanted to be a, like a nurse, right? Um, did the whole process of you, physical therapy, going through all the surgeries, just help uh, improve that or give you like a new love for it? Yes, definitely. In a, in a, in a very different way, too. I don't know how to explain this because um, I knew I wanted to do medicine, right? I like helping people, you know, like the whole nine yards and everything but and I wanted to be a physician assistant so before the accident I was on track for that I wanted to do that um but 
Um, when I got in the hospital, there's like a million professions and everybody's mm -hmm. very essential to the care of the patient. And like everyone has such a vital role and, and everyone's job is super important that the quality of health of that patient would not be the same without that person. And I just learned about so many different roles and I would constantly ask people like, what do you do? Like, um, how long have you been doing this? Like I was interviewing people yeah. all the time because it, I, yes, I was in a bad spot because of my situation, but I also, I also capitalized on that. And I was like, this is an opportunity to learn, you know? Um, so I would observe the doctors and see how they treated me in comparison to like everyone else. And I would observe the nurses and it was, and before that I had worked at a hospital or volunteered at a hospital working with patients. And so now it was, it was really, um, humbling to be a patient myself and see it from my side and see, like, I don't like it when people did this. I don't like how people treated me like this. So it also gave me an awareness of like how to better empathize with people when I got out and when I kept continued, like working at a hospital. Um, so I'm also really grateful for that. And so that, so yes, that experience did impact me a lot in my my decision to pursue healthcare continuing um, because I realized that I didn't want to be a PA. I didn't know a lot about it um, and I didn't really like the job responsibilities of it. And I was doing it because I thought it was the best thing kind of thing, you know? Um, but I, and experience, I believe experiences are so important. Like you need to go out there and get your hands dirty and find out if you like to do something or not. And I started getting into public health and the public health side of medicine and like how you're preventing things on a population scale. And I just fell in love with that. And I've been running with it since. And now I'm going to get, um, I'm trying to pursue my master's in health policy and management. How far are you away from that? I've spent the last few months um, applying to grad schools um, and finishing bachelor's. So if if I get into schools this cycle, then I will start next September or so. What so schools are you hoping to get into? UCLA. UCLA, <laughs> sure. yeah. UCLA or San Diego. Nice. San Diego, um, yeah, really good program too. Um, I would be sad because like I'd be far away from my family, but it's a really great school and I'd be happy to like get my education there too. But I would love to go back to UCLA because I went there and I really liked the school and I've seen, you know, the program itself and so yeah. I, yeah, Bruin for life. <laughs> yes. I mean, San Diego, in the grand scheme of things, when you look at it, it's not that far. It's yeah, like, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that I'm going to, yeah. like, New York or mm -hmm. on the yes. other side See, of the that city. Would, yeah, that would be tough. But, yeah, it's definitely, like, double yeah, right? from L.A. to San Diego. Yeah, double. definitely. Probably. So, um, I know the <sighs> accent probably left you with, like, a lot of scars and stuff like that. How long did it take for you to, like, accept yourself in the, in the body you were, you were in now? immediately yeah. and i don't know why but yeah because um and i think something that just kept reinforcing that i reinforcing the idea that i accepted myself immediately with the scars and everything was because um when the nurses would like come and um look at the wounds and like you know put whatever they need to put on it so that it can heal faster um they're always like oh you know you can always 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 they're always telling me that i can cover it with tattoos i'm just I would say, no, like, I don't want to cover them with tattoos. Like, I'm so proud of my scars. I'm so proud of them. Like, any opportunity to show them, like, I will show you. <laughs> like, it's, like, I have these scars, and they tell this story, and it means so much to me, you know? And if it wasn't for these scars, I wouldn't be where I am, and I wouldn't be who I am. So I'm so happy and proud of them. And also going off of that, like, accepting the body that I was in. Um, I had the blessing, and I was fortunate enough to literally walk away from this accident. I'm whole. I know that a lot of people usually are left disfigured they'd lose limbs i almost lost my foot so i'm really grateful that i'm whole and from then on like i have control over yes i couldn't control getting hit by a car but i can control like how i take care of my body and so that's that's also been empowering to me that realization too so what do you think helped you the most from the recovering process do you think it was physical therapy like not necessarily just physical recovery but mm -hmm. mental and physical the very weighted question because there's so many yeah. things that go into no, you're, it. You're good. I mean, just um, off the top of your head, a couple of things in. Yeah, definitely. So yes, physical therapy helped like, immensely, 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 immensely. Um, it helped me obviously physically. It obviously helped me mentally because it was like, because yeah, like when you're very helpless and you can't move, you're very, very grateful when when you get your strength back, you know, and you can be a little bit independent, like drive yourself and things like that. Um, another thing that helped me a lot was um support 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 like 
I just had so much support, so much love, so many people who who dropped so many things to come be with me constantly. My mom, um, she spent almost every single night with me in the hospital. Almost every single night I didn't spend alone. Like, I don't think a lot of people can say that. And from the from the two years that I've been shifting at the hospital that I'm at, people come and go, you know? Um, and no, not many people are very fortunate to have somebody there constantly 24 hours of the day. So I'm really grateful for that because it's such a mentally grueling experience that I don't think I'd be in a, such a good, peaceful perspective mentality if it wasn't having like the support of my mom. Because obviously like I wasn't a perfect person and I would get angry and like have tantrums and like cry a lot, like, because I was in the situation, I was helpless. Um, and just having that support of my mom and just just her always being there for me and talking to me and just being so strong, like, yeah, that helped immensely, immensely. Um, I know I uh, this is kind of like a little more personal, but I remember you saying that um, after the accident, you and your boyfriend realized you weren't, like, meant to be together or whatever you said. Um, you want to touch on that a little bit too? That specifically? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that is interesting, right? Because you almost die with a person and it's just mm -hmm. like, you guys are meant to be together and um that's how i felt that's how it truly felt at the beginning um and we were together for about three years um officially and um the first two years of our relationship were not good like at all we were young and it was just very toxic um and i think yeah I'll, like yeah we had good moments and everything and that's what kept us going but i feel like we both should have walked away a long time ago before that, but we didn't. And then the accident happened and it was kind of like every, all of that was just erased, like completely, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, yeah, it's like I said, it's, we, we almost died together. Like everybody was like, you guys are meant to be together. Like that's how we felt too. I was like, we're going to get married. <laughs> like all the whole nine yards. And the, so I spent a year in recovery after the accident. Um, and yeah, he did end up going back to work, but like, it was just us, you know? So that last year of our relationship was like the one of the best years of our relationship. And then um, I started school again and um, I just started realizing like, I didn't feel the same way. And the accident didn't really erase those two years of, of trauma that we had endured during the relationship. And I started re realizing that like, this isn't the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with despite everything that had happened, you know? Um, and I know he had also taken it really, really hard too, because he was like, we're fine now, you know, like none of that should matter. And I was like, I know I understand and it's probably like at the worst times, but it, you know, like if it, if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't work, like we can't keep forcing it. Um, especially if I felt like I was just kept moving forward and I wasn't in that place mentally anymore. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, that was very, really hard. Um, but given the circumstances too, but yeah. So I know you said you guys kind of, you said kind of ended it on not awful terms, but kind of bad terms you said. Mm, kind of it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. So do you guys still are in contact in any way or no? No. no? What no. anybody else from the accident? Do you still talk yes, to any of them? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. And I actually like saw them yesterday um, because I became really good friends with his friends and everything like that. So yeah, we still kept in contact. Um one of his friends, like, girlfriend I became really close with, and she's pregnant and going to have a baby. So, like, I went over to their apartment, and, like, it was really nice catching up. And, yeah, like, the accident really brought us together. And, like, I still maintain those relationships because they were always there for me. And, like, um, that doesn't get in the way of, like, the fact that, oh, they were his friends first kind of thing. I know that, like, there's, like, a lot of, like, Makes feelings weirdness. About it, yeah. yeah, awkwardness with that. But in this situation, like, no, because I feel like because of the accident – um, really made a lot of us closer in that way. So, yeah. 